Welcome back to the vlog. It's been a while since our last episode and a lot's happened in that time. Just for a quick recap, we launched a short series on YouTube which you guys have been showing a lot of love to. Thank you so much for your support. We also are currently in the midst of a 30 day profit challenge. That series will be ongoing the rest of the month so keep an eye out for that. We also launched at JQ Poker on Instagram. So wherever your preferred platform of choice is, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, all that at JQ Poker, follow, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We also, you notice I'm wearing the Sharks hat, we created and launched our own Sunday Sharks room on Club GG. So if you wanna play online poker with me and a bunch of other highly talented, good players, and some not so good players on there as well, uh, you can message at Sunday Sharks on Telegram, or you can DM JQ Poker on Instagram or you can click the link in my bios uh, for more information on how to join that. We're running a tournament series that's starting every Wednesdays and Fridays, so we're gonna get going at a bigger capacity as well as we have some rakeless cash on there. So this vlog episode is gonna take you through sort of the latter half of 2023 and how those results went. This is a spoiler, I ran worse than early 2000s the Granu at the end of 2023, so it was a little bit rough. Uh, we're also gonna take you through the first session I played of 2024. Uh, hopefully swinging back up, getting on the right trajectory. And thank you guys for your support. Like, comment, subscribe, and see you guys later. Okay, it's a Wednesday night. Just started the new year uh, off with the loss. So this is our second session of 2024. We need some run good desperately. I'm driving out to a private game uh, in the county over uh, from a friend I recently met playing poker. So he's hosting it. So. He's lucky enough to have let me vlog this session, which is going to be great. Uh, so hopefully we get some run good starting in the new year because we all know that I need it. <laughs> so, it's, so I mentioned running bad toward the end of the year and I want to walk you guys through some of these hands so you could really understand how it was. So imagine you sit down, you're playing a session, starts off pretty well, building up your stack when you look down at pocket queens under the gun. You make a normal raise. There's a short stack in the low jack who three bets you all in to around $75. The big blind announces out loud, eh, I want to gamble, and he calls a 75. You see a bunch of dead money, you have pocket queens, you're all in. I four bet all in, big blind tanks and says, all right, I'll gamble. Turns over ace deuce suited. Pretty good spot, right? Not when there's an ace in the window and you don't improve. We lose an $800 pot there. But all right, you got unlucky, but you feel like your head's in the right space. You feel like you could rebuy. So you rebuy and the very next hand that you get dealt is ace jack in the cutoff. It's suited. There's an open in middle position. You call in position. So you go heads up to a flop, which is amazing. It's jack, jack, deuce. You have trips with the best kicker. He checks to you. You make a small bet. He calls, turns a queen, and your opponent now goes all in. It's a dream spot. You snap call, and he turns over pocket queens for the turned full house. And you lose another $800 pot. You think, maybe tonight's not my night. So you decide to come back another day you buy in, you're playing pretty well, you pick up pocket queens again. You make a raise from early position. You get a caller in the big blind. Flop comes pretty safe, jack eight four rainbow. The small blind now donks. You think it's a little weird, but you still have an over pair. You decide to raise. He goes all in, you call, and he tells you that he is a jack. You say, well, that's good news. I could beat a jack. Turns a seven. Got about 80% chance to win. And River gives your opponent two pair. And you lose another maybe $700 pot. But you still feel like, all right, I got unlucky. You're in a good headspace. You rebuy. You actually run up your stack. You run it up and you have about maybe 600, 700 in front of you. You're playing well, it's toward the end of the night. You announce it's your last orbit, you're about to leave. You're in the cutoff with queen seven suited. There's a limp from the low jack. He decides to raise it up. 
and you guys go heads up to a flop. Flop comes six, five, three, all clubs. You flop yourself the third nut flush with the gut shot redraw to the straight flush. Opponent checks. You make a small bet. A check raises you pretty big. I think it's probably a little weird. I think you could have just the ace of clubs or the king of clubs. You want to keep his bluffs in and evaluate some turns. You think if you raise here and he folds two pair or a set, that would be a disaster. So you just call. Turns the ace of spades. Not a club. Still the third nuts. Pretty safe. Your opponent goes all in. You call. Your opponent has ace six with the ace of clubs. And the river is the ace of diamonds. And you lose probably a $1,300 pot. All of those hands happened in the span of three weeks toward the end of 2023. So I think you could see how we are desperate to start running a little bit better. That seems like it might start happening when we pick up Ace King suited under the gun in the first orbit we're playing. Currently we're five handed while we wait for others to arrive. We open up to six, pretty standard. Small blind makes the call. Big blind looks down at his cards and he likes them enough to three bet up to $22. This player is very active and I decided after thinking for a while, I considered four bet ripping it, but Ace King suited. Might want to just see a flop in position here. so. We decide to call. I think it's fine. You can mix here, especially he's an active player. You can keep some of his bluffs in. So we call. We go heads up to a flop. Which is not great for us. It comes 7, 6, 4, rainbow. And the news doesn't get any better when he overbet jams a stack in. We absolutely cannot call here. So have to just fold. And he is so quick to turn over what he 3 bet us with. That's right. It's the standard 3 bet with a 7-3 offsuit and flopping a pair. So that's how the session's gonna start. Our next hand, we pick up Ace-King again, this time of the offsuit variety. We're on the button, there's an under the gun limp, middle position raised to five, cut off three bets to 11. We're not in the mood to flat again with Ace-King in position, so we put in the four bet. As played, I made it 25. It's a little small, but I think in position, you can make it a little bit smaller. Also four bets kind of get the job done. Uh, anyways, cut off wants to play for all. He five bets. We call pretty quickly. Oof. Up to you. Uh, once is good. One time. I channel my inner Mickey Mouse and say, "Let's go one time." We turn the Ace of Diamonds, and we are good against Pocket Queens. So we're gonna go ahead and scoop this hundred seventy dollar pot. Pretty nice way to get the session back on track. At this point, my phone unfortunately was running out of battery, so I had to plug it in. We missed a couple hands, but I'll break them down for you in a hand replayer. All right, here's one of the hands that we missed while my phone was charging. We're in the big blind with 10-3 offsuit. Not a hand I'd normally play, but when it limps around to me, oftentimes in this configuration where I'm in the big blind and it limps around, I will be doing a fair amount of squeezing, uh, but this is just far too weak of a hand. It would be hand like 10 9 of diamonds would get squeezed and things like that. But 10 3 off, far too weak to squeeze here. So we'll just see a flop multi way. And the flop is pretty good. It comes out ace 10 10 rainbow. So we flop trips, obviously. Small blinds checks to us. Uh, I debated between check raising and leading here, but on boards that are limped pre, they tend to check around a lot more. Plus, I think check raising probably look stronger and would increase our fold frequency. So we obviously want ace x to call us down. So we decided to lead here for half pot. Under the gun and the middle position player are both gonna fold. Cut off six around and we're gonna end up going heads up to a turn card, which comes deuce of diamonds, completes the rainbow, no flush draws out there. We're gonna continue betting on this board. We chose a pretty large sizing actually. We went for 20 into 24. And um, when we make this large sizing, obviously we're targeting ace x. Um, but the hand gets a little bit gross when our cutoff very quickly jams it 
in for a 7x raise. Ah, uh, ha. Huh. It's a tough one. So we'd have to call off most of our stack. Uh, it would be 120 for us to call to win 180. So not even really getting two to one, uh, especially with this turn card, we're losing to all other tens at the moment. Obviously a lot of them we might chop with at the river, but if our opponent has a 10, we're pretty much drawing to three outs or a chop. Uh, I don't think our opponent would limp ace 10 from the cutoff, but he might limp a hand like pocket twos might be something that he could put in his limp range. Um, I think this is probably a gross overplay by a lot of ace x, so I, I didn't really expect him to have ace x in this spot a lot, other than maybe ace ace. Even though that would be weird for him to limp from the cutoff, the small Vaughn and I are very active players in this game, so... You see sometimes that these stakes players employing the limp re-raise strategy with big hands. So I think this is just pretty much a fold. Thought about it for a while, decided to let it go, and we get the bad news when he shows us ace-queen offsuit. He did later say that he was going for the limp re-raise, so you know, there is that, but obviously if he raises pre, we don't lose a cent, and obviously we we'd lose by folding the best hand, but I think it's probably is a fold. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously, not a fun spot there. We're back to live hands, and we pick up the cowboy in the middle position. There is an under the gun straddle on for $5, so we're gonna go ahead and bump it up. We make it 15. Always a good idea to raise your strongest hands. It folds back around to the straddler, it's going to flick in the call. We go heads up to a flop, which isn't terrible, but isn't the best for us. It comes out queen, queen, three. And it gets a little weird when the under the gun straddler donks into us for $5. I considered raising, but I think we might be way ahead or way behind. We just call. We go off to a turn. Small blind does decide to make a real raise size now. It's pretty large, so... I think we should just call here in position again, evaluate some rivers. He now decides to bet very small. He goes for five again. I decide to just flick in the call and we are good against pocket fours. Such a net, such a net that I don't want to use it fucking river. I'm not feeling the best after not raising that river and folding the tens hand earlier. One time after a losing session, I was talking to my mom and she asked me how I know I'm not the fish. Well, this audio clip's for you, Ma. This guy just owns my soul. Wow. He got me to fold. This guy, bro. He has, he's got to come to this game more often. Oh, wow. He just called me a fish. <laughs> I'm clipping that. That's in the vlog. <laughs> so sick. <laughs>
All right, uh, first winning session of 2024. Uh, and it should have been more. I made a hero fold that I didn't get on camera that I'll, I'll show you guys that maybe I should call off for a pretty big bet. But we were in for 150, out for 380. Had a lot of fun. Those guys are very nice guys. Uh, very funny table. You know, just a home game. But um, feels good to get off the snide for um, 2024. Uh, looking a little mysterious with the shadow here. I don't know about that. But um, yeah, hopefully first of many. So let's keep going. Good luck, us.